Right, hello everybody, welcome to our webinar. Um, today we've got um, Dr. Chris Malumphy from Ferra, who's going to be talking to us about the plain and the oak lace bugs. Um, in the office here we've got me, Susie, uh, Lucy Turner and Peter Crow. So but I'm going to hand over to Chris now and he's going to tell us all about the plain and the oak lace bugs. Over to you then, Chris. Thank you. And uh, thank you to everybody who's taken the trouble to listen to this um, webinar. Uh, it gives me great pleasure to have the opportunity to talk about um, the platanus and the oak lace bugs. Uh, some of these insects actually have more than one common name. So this uh, platanus lace bug is also called the plain lace bug, which I think is inappropriate because they're actually uh, strikingly beautiful. Um, bugs, which is why I'd, I'm going to call it the platanus lace bug. Um, and then in North America, they actually call it a sycamore lace bug because one of its main hosts, um, uh, a species, the American sycamore, um, we use the, the, the name sycamore for different species in Europe. So sycamore lace bug is not so appropriate for Europe, which is why we use the name platanus or plain lace bug. So the Latin names are Caithuca ciliata and Caithuca arcuata. And one of, one of the reasons it gives me great pleasure to talk to you is because these bugs are some of the most beautiful pests you could actually come across. But you really have to sort of look at them under a hand lens or a microscope to really appreciate the, uh, the, the beauty of these insects. Next slide, please. So I just want to start um, by telling you what lace bugs are. Well, they're plant feeding bugs in the family Tingidae, and there are about 2,000 species found worldwide, of which 24 species occur in Britain. And I'd like to just uh, take the opportunity to recommend a fantastic site for looking at uh, pictures of uh, British bugs, um, actually called uh, British bugs, and it can be found at www.britishbugs.org.uk. And that can give some information on the, the, the other British um, lace bugs. So uh, most lace bug species have an elaborate net or lace-like structure that covers the upper body. And this is really for camouflage reasons. Um, the majority of these lace bugs are host-specific. That is, they generally feed on one type of plant. Um, but if, if the preferred host is not available, they will feed on sort of non-host um, plants. So they can sort of generally, they prefer to feed and breed on one type of plant, but if, in order to survive, they may feed on, on sort of non-hosts. And this causes uh, problems for scientists because people often, they, some of these species may have a, quite a long list of plants that they can feed on or that, that they can feed on in the laboratory, but they're not true hosts. They can't complete their development, their life cycle on these other plants. And a small number of lace bugs are highly destructive plant pests, which is one of the main reasons that we're, we're so interested in them. So I'm going to talk about the platanus lace bug first. And much of this talk is based on the platanus lace bug because this is the species which is much more widespread and common in Europe uh, in comparison to the oak lace bug. In fact, all you have to do is cross the channel and um, even in northern Europe and right across Europe you can find platanus lace bug. Especially, it is much more conspicuous um, in the late summer when they've had a number of generations and the damage is really conspicuous. So I happened to visit uh, Brussels in Belgium last September and uh, like London, the, um, the, the London Plain is a very common, it's a sort of iconic tree, it's in um, all of the parks and along the main sort of avenues and the uh, platanus laceberg had, had caused very conspicuous sort of damage, yellowing of the leaves. So, um, platanus laceberg obviously feeds on platanus species, and it has a preference for London plain, that's platanus acerifolia, oriental plain, platanus orientalis, 
and American sycamore, Platanus occidentalis. So it's a North American species that was accidentally introduced into Europe and it was first found in Italy as early as the 1960s and the first published report was in 1964. So it's taken about or nearly half a century to actually spread right across Europe. It's, it's now very common in Central and Southern Europe. But what's relevant to us is that it was only found in Belgium and the Netherlands fairly recently in 2013. So it has spread slowly across the whole of Europe and now it's literally just across the English Channel which is why we're concerned that it's, it doesn't take much more of a, a leap to uh, enter the UK. So the Platinus Laysberg has, has been found on one occasion in the UK in North Bedfordshire. A small population of Platinus Laysbergs were found at two commercial nurseries in September and October 2006, so it's 10 years ago now. And they were introduced on large seven meter tall platinous trees that were imported from uh, continental Europe. And as you can imagine, um, inspecting these large trees prior to export and also when they arrive at the nurseries is very uh, difficult just because of the, the sheer height of these trees. Fortunately, the outbreak was detected at a very early stage and the, the trees were treated and sprayed and the insects were not found in subsequent years. So it appears that the action taken at the very early stages uh, was successful in eradicating the pest. And this sort of emphasizes why it's so important for observatory volunteers um, to be our sort of uh, eyes and ears on the ground looking out for these pests. Because if, it, if they are caught at a very early stage, it is possible to um, eradicate or at least contain them. So the oak, the oak lacebug is a sort of close relative of the platinus lacebug. It's also native to North America, but it feeds on oaks, on Quercus species, and in particular um, a group called the white oaks. And this contains our um, very important English oak, Quercus roba. This species was also introduced to Europe via Italy, but it's a relatively recent arrival in comparison. It was first reported in 2000, and again, it's spreading slowly across southern Europe and in central Europe. It hasn't reached northern Europe, and it hasn't been in Europe um, really long enough for conspicuous damage to occur in, in comparison to the um, platinous lace bug. It, it, as I mentioned before, these lace bugs, if they can't find their preferred host, they will feed on other plants, but they won't necessarily be able to breed or complete their life cycle on them. So the oak lace bug has been recorded on, um, on malus, on rubus, and ulmus, growing in the vicinity of infected trees. You can see an adult in the picture, and you can see it's a sort of a, a creamy color, and it has a series of um, brownish markings or spots, but these can actually be fair, highly sort of variable, so they can sort of um, uh, look quite different. There's different populations um, can have, can be quite different in appearance and vary in the numbers of these brown spots. I'm just going to outline the biology of the platinous lacebug, but the oak lacebug biology is very similar. The adults over winter um, in bark crevices or bark flakes, um, or occasionally leaf litter, and they're often gregarious, forming sort of large groups uh, um, under these um, bark flakes. And if you look at mature platinus, um, you'll see the, how um, there's lots of opportunities for these bugs to hide, and the same with the oak. There's lots of um, cracks and crevices for these um, bugs to overwinter. The, 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 the females lay an average of 100 eggs, but some individual female platinous lace bugs have laid up to 350 eggs on the lower surface of the leaves during spring after they've um, um, come out of their sort of hibernation over winter. And they lay their eggs in small groups. The nymphal stars, that's the immature stages, they, they have five 
um, distinct nymphal instars before they become an adult. And the life cycle varies considerably depending on temperature and climatic conditions. So the life cycle can take 29 days or up to 56 days. And the platinous lacebow can have two or three generations, generations each year, whereas the oak lacebow has uh, three generations in northern Italy and central Europe. The adults can fly, but they're rather delicate and they're not strong flyers. So they, they can be carried long distance by the wind or by, on vehicles or humans and, of course, in plant trade. And the picture shows um, a group of overwintering adults um, that were hidden beneath some bark flakes that have been lifted to show them. The eggs are elliptical and they're brown with a pale operculum. A perculum is just actually a lid. If you think that these bugs actually have sucking mouth parts, so they don't have um, mandibles, they don't have chewing mouth parts, so they can't chew their way out of the egg. They have to push their, their way out, which is why the, the, the egg is actually fitted with a lid for them to escape. And they're laid in small groups in angles of the main vein on the undersides of the leaf. And the eggs are really tiny. They're only about half a millimetre in length. The nymphs are dorsoventrally flattened. They're oval in shape and they're black and spiny. The adults also actually have a jet black body, which you can see if you turn them over. But they're covered in a, a sort of milky white lace-like structure with variable brown markings. And the adults are about three and a half millimetres in length. As I mentioned, the eggs are laid in groups on the undersurface of the leaf. And when they hatch, they initially, for the early instars, they stick together, they stay on the same leaf. So certainly, um, uh, for example, in uh, early spring, when they, they first sort of um, hatch, you can turn over the leaves and you can see large numbers of these uh, black spiky nymphs all on the same leaf. And they're very slow moving and they're reluctant to um, move on to other leaves. The final or the late instar nymphs are much more um, likely to move off onto other leaves and will disperse. And the adults can move surprisingly quickly. For example, when I was in um, Brussels and I could see um, hundreds of adult platinous lacebugs on the plane trees in uh, Brussels, I was trying to photograph these leaves because it looked very impressive. But every leaf I touched or turned over, the adults would quickly disperse. So I was lucky to get a photo just with a, a small number of adults left on it. So here we have a picture of the platinous lacebug and oak lacebug adults. And they are very similar um, in appearance. In life, when they're actually on the host plants, they do appear um, actually paler probably than shown in this picture. So they look almost sort of whitish in contrast to the um, leaves. As I mentioned before, they do have these characteristic brown spots on the back, but these are, are really sort of quite variable. But in these pictures, you can see why they've got the common name lacebug from these very sort of delicate um, projections um, off the, from the body. The, the, the ones on the, uh, the back of the body, these are the, um, uh, the first pair of wings which protect the delicate wings beneath which are actually used for flight. When looking for lace bugs and looking for the symptoms, it's useful to understand how they feed. And the lace bugs are fairly conspicuous. So they sit on the lower surface of the leaf. But they don't just feed on the cells in the lower layers of the leaf. They sit on the lower surface and they insert their needle-like mouth parts and they actually feed on um, the layer of cells just below the um, upper epidermis. And this layer of cells is called the palisade layer. So they actually, you actually, the bugs are hidden on the lower surface, but they feed 
um, on the cells just below the upper surface so the damage, the feeding damage is visible on the upper surface and the bugs are hidden beneath. So the, um, the chlorosis, that's the yellowing of the leaves, is only really visible from the upper surface whereas the bugs, um, their, their feces, that's their excrement and their cast skins are all hidden beneath the leaf. As I'd mentioned before, the bugs often feed um, together and so you, you often have um, large numbers of uh, bugs on a few leaves and the other leaves are, are perfectly okay. And the, the, the sort of damage, the early stage of damage is a sort of um, yellow um, uh, speckling on the upper surface of the leaf. But as the, um, the bugs get bigger and they feed more, it can cause the leaves to quite literally turn white, become completely um, chlorotic. And this damage is visible easily from 100 yards away. You can see it from some distance. It's really conspicuous once you've got your eye in. And then later in the um, year, the leaves actually turn a sort of bronze color. They're, they're sort of dying off. And the leaves can be sort of dropped prematurely. So the, the, the damage is very conspicuous. The problem is that other insects also suck the sap out of leaves and can cause similar damage, particularly on oak. There's a whole range of leaf hoppers that feed on oaks and can cause similar damage. So um, what you need to do is turn the leaf over. So on the lower surface, that's where you'll actually see the insects. So the damage is on the upper surface and the bugs are on the lower surface. And so you may see the adults and the nymphs. And as I mentioned before, the adults can actually, they may sort of uh, run or, or fly off the leaf very, very quickly. You may see old groups of eggs that have hatched. Um, but also, very characteristically, you'll see black dots on the lower surface. And this is because the insects, when they're feeding, they produce liquid um, frass or excrement. And this dries on the leaf surface into little round black spots. And in heavy infestations, you can have very high concentrations of these black spots. So the top of the leaf is almost white because of the chlorosis. And underneath the leaf, you get lots and lots of these um, black spots, which is very characteristic. You may also see the cast skins of the nymphs, which are, are, are black and, again, sort of characteristic. So if you do find um, lace bugs on oak and on platinus, um, it's highly likely to be one of these um, non-native North American species. So why are we concerned about these two bugs? Well, the sort of um, impact is uh, on the actual sort of trees is that they can cause yellowing, they can cause chlorosis, um, you can get early leaf fall, um, you can, in fact, in heavy infestations, get complete defoliation um, by sort of late summer. It can cause thinning and a reduction in tree growth. And, of course, London Plain, Platinus, and Quercus especially, these are iconic trees. These are so important for our environment. Um, all around central London, around the, the royal parks, the royal palaces, you'll come across uh, magnificent sort of London Plain trees. And of course, our woods are full of um, ancient sort of uh, oak trees. So these are so sort of important um, to the UK that we want to keep these uh, pests out for as long as possible. The, 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 the actual impact of the infestations is often worse in urban areas where the trees may be stressed. And the impact is much worse um, during sort of uh, periods of drought when the trees are suffering from water stress. But also, significantly, um, the Platinus laceberg has been associated with some fungal infections in northern Italy, and this has uh, led to a decline in some of the trees. So uh, the attacks by the Platinus laceberg, um, it, it, it may not kill the tree itself, but in combination of, with other things such as a canker stain of plain, which we don't actually have in the UK yet, um, could be more significant. And again, the, um, the oaks uh, with um, oak decline, uh, they have enough problems um, to cope with already. So we want to 
the last thing we want is, is another sort of uh, insect attacking the oaks and weakening them. So if you do find lace bugs, and they are very characteristic on platanus or oak, they are very unlikely to be native species because we don't have any native species that feed on these trees. So please report them. And the best thing to do is to take a photograph and report it via tree alert. I do have to um, give a warning that be very careful if you do handle these. There are several cases of the platinous lacebug recorded biting people. And they have actually analysed the bugs and found human blood inside the stomach contents. So it, it, this is um, something that's very rare, and I, I don't want to alarm anybody, but it, it, does, it, it can actually happen. And these, the, the, the bug bites have been associated with dermatitis. So as I mentioned before, the bugs often, um, the, particularly the platinous lace bug, can occur in enormous numbers in urban areas. And people um, who might be sitting in cafes below the uh, London plain, they can get uh, lots of these bugs falling on them and they can get bitten. So uh, I'm, not to, I'm not trying to scare anybody, but please be careful if you do come across an infestation, be very careful how you handle them. And I'd just like to say it's been a pleasure talking to you. I hope you found this informative and interesting and uh, thank you for your time. Thank you very much, Chris. That was really interesting. Um, does anybody have any questions for Chris? In that case, I've got one for you, Chris. Yes. Um, um, on the continent, do they, do they, are there any sort of biocontrol agents that they use against this um, pest, or, or are there sort of natural predators? There are. Um, there's been a lot of research in Italy and France on the natural enemies, and there's a whole range of natural enemies. I think the last count was about 36 species of wasps and beetles and ladybirds, but they seem to have almost no impact on the numbers of the lacebugs, particularly in urban areas. So we don't have um, effective methods of controlling them. Pesticides can be used, but they're very restricted in um, obviously public places and urban areas. So with, uh, management, there are no really effective ways of managing these, uh, these insects. Mm. Well, is that because um, you know, their life cycle is so quick and they can sort of reproduce so quickly? Is that sort of what the main problem is? Well, I think also the, um, obviously they're, they're not native to Europe. So in North America, they, the, the numbers are suppressed by natural enemies that do occur in North America. But they also, um, uh, as you said, because of the, the sort of high fecundity, the, the way they can reproduce very quickly, they do occasionally have um, outbreaks and plagues of these bugs in North America where they're native. So in, in Europe, uh, we haven't, um, with all the research and the, um, that been, has been carried out, they, they still haven't found an effective uh, way of controlling these. Hmm. Okay. And, and also, could you, um, what would be the most, sort of, uh, most important biosecurity sort of um, measure to take against you know, these, these bugs, if you came across them, how would you sort of deal with the biosecurity? Well, regarding to the biosecurity, um, probably the, one of the biggest risks is um, the import of plants for planting. And there is um, a sort of a, a popular demand for instant large trees, which is always going to be a high risk, not just for these lace bugs, but for all sorts, a whole range of other pests. So, um, of course, the that these plants are checked prior to uh, they're being exported and they are, uh, they are plant passported. Um, but it's almost impossible to detect some of these insect eggs on tall trees. So there's always a risk of these insects um, coming into the UK. So it, it, it's sort of um, a lot of it's sort of common sense, making sure you source any sort of uh, plants from reliable sort of nurseries. But the, there's also the uh, platinous uh, trees, the plane trees, they are um, checked for um, plane um, canker. Um, I, sorry, I can't remember the, the Latin name now, but they are, they are checked for the, uh, the, the, the regulated plane disease, so that they are examined before they sort of are imported into the UK. Um, 
but there's also the problem, of course, of the insects hitchhiking. And as I mentioned, just going to um, Brussels and just walking around, actually in the centre of Brussels, I did find some of the bugs had fallen onto me. And I suppose being an entomologist, I know what I'm looking for. But it's just a, a bit of care when you do travel to the continent and you're coming back and if you take a car, it's always wise just to check that you're, you don't have any sort of obvious insects that are coming back in the car with you. Okay. And Chris, have you ever been bitten by one? Do you know what? I've handled them and I haven't been bitten. I don't know whether my, I'm too thick-skinned or well, I'm not tasty enough. But <laughs> it, it's like most of these things that some people seem to be much more uh, susceptible. Hmm. If I've been up to um, Scotland on a, 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 my, uh, sort of camping with my family and I seem to be the only person in my family who the uh, midges didn't like to bite. So um, oh. it, it, they, they do seem to be um, very particular in who they do want to, uh, to bite. Oh, okay. All right. Well, that was uh, great. Thank you very much again, Chris. Um, uh, the next webinar, then, is not till September. So it'll be on the 21st of September, and it will be on the Red Next Longhorn Beetle. Um, and we're having a break for July and August because of holidays. So if you're around, it would be great if you could join us for the Red Next Longhorn Beetle webinar, then. Um, so yeah, we'll wind it up now. So thank you very much again everybody for attending and thanks very much again to Chris.